Always when you're back, and today it's Marketplace Monday where we break down what's happening this week. And this week, the roster updates dropping. Season three of them, the show is dropping. Whole bunch of content coming this week. First thing I wanted to mention join the Discord, join the membership. We have tons of good stuff down there. Go join it for free or help support the channel, all right? But first things first, Head Start Program Rewards, right? With season three coming, you only have a couple days left to get a lot of good XP to start your progress off. You can actually get 60,000 XP to start off season three by doing a lot of stuff that I wouldn't recommend actually doing. But if you plan on playing a lot, finish up the Adrian Beltre po program, finish up Moments of Glory, finish up the All-Star Week program, the season two awards, and the action figure series. You need 20 of them. You need eight season two awards, guys. Finish up that, you get 60K XP. And the XP reward path is changing a lot in season number three. Season number three, there's two XP reward paths. The first of which, uh, I mean, you'll be able to get a boss, your first XP reward path boss, 99 overall, at only 100,000 XP. Uh, definitely an upgrade and improvement from what we have in season number two. Uh, and actually, if you finish the Head Start program, you're only 40,000 XP away from that first 99 overall. Very, very good. Very, I like to see that a lot. Another thing to note in season number three, kind of hyping up the game a little bit, like a reason to get back on, the season three collection is going to easily give you wild card slots. If you collect one season three player, it takes five seconds, you'll be able to get your first wild card slot. Collect 15 season three players, and you'll be able to get your second wild card slot, and then collecting 50 of them, you'll get your third. I mean, that should, that, you know, the, the thing that does though, it does kind of motivate you to do team affinity. Now, fortunately, Team Affinity is not going to be trash. It's not going to be these 89 overalls we have every single chapter one. It's going to be 95 overalls. That's kind of exciting. Kind of gives you another incentive to do it. Uh, so I do think Team Affinity might be worth playing. Uh, so definitely take a look at the repeatable multiplayer missions. Those are usually the best things to be doing. Heading in there with division teams builds. Uh, take a look at the extreme moments whenever they come out. A lot of the extreme moments are actually pretty easy. I recommend doing the extreme showdown if you're good enough. If not, grinding the PXP missions and the repeatable missions, whichever ones seem easier. And collecting those guys for Team Affinity will give you a, definitely a big advantage in ranked seasons. Uh, getting those three wild card slots, very important. Another thing to note, you know, season two guys obviously won't be usable unless you're using them as a wild card spot. So if you have a lot of these guys that are worth a chunk of change, go ahead and sell them off right now because their price is only going to go down lower. Definitely a good time to be selling these guys. You're going to have to be buying some Season 3 cards to replace them moving forwards. Anything else to cover on Season 3? I don't really think so. New card series in Team Affinity, that'll be cool. New ranked and event. And Road to World series, you, you can't convince me to go back on the Road to World series. We were so close last time. Go check out the playlist Road to World series. Go check out it. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. The roster update is the next thing we'll be talking about. Uh, although... Two new collections. I wonder if one of those collections might actually be Breakout uh, or Core. It could be a Core collection. And if we have a Core collection coming out, I want to go check the marketplace. It probably isn't going to be Core because I feel like I would have heard about it. But we could see a spike in some of these Core cards that are uh, not live series. So if you can find any Core non-live series cards, I want to actually come in here and take a look at the sets. Uh, I don't really know what I'd be looking at though. Probably Breakout cards, right? Breakout. Is there any, there probably is a bit of investing to be done in the, you know, if in the anticipation of a potential, like guys like this, maybe the barrier breaker cards, right? We could definitely see a spike in these prices for sure if there is a core series. So I would investigate that yourself. Ask us in the Discord. Maybe we'll do some digging for you if you're a member. And that definitely could be a bit of an investment opportunity low key. Again, not too sure if it's a core series. Uh, collection yet but we should be getting one of those in the future anyway but back to the roster update guys the bad news is not too many good uh not too many good performances from these roster update guys this time out so that's a bit disappointing you know it's probably gonna be a bit of a smaller update even though it was a five week window look at the prices joe ryan quick sell played like trash salvi quick sell played like trash josh hater People actually really wanted me to talk about him in the buy hold sell. I thought they were joking, but looking at his price for the first time, my bad, probably should have. We're gonna have a whole video where I do my predictions on these guys in a separate video. I'll have that coming out soon. Lindor, he's a diamond lock. Diamond lock in the Discord, 
Diamond Lock and his price. We had we had him as a buy from day one at, at Quick Sell. So you're welcome for doubling your stubs. Uh, I do think that he's probably going to be a go ahead and sell him at current prices. We'll have some advice on that in the future videos. Yiner Diaz has been playing well, but he's priced a bit high. It's a bit of a risk. Does he get that boost from an 83 to 85 plus two? I mean, who else is going to go diamond? The other guy that's a potential diamond is Griffin Jacks. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Jackson Merrill's priced a bit high. You can see zeros in the sell now, in the sell now column, left and right. Everything is a zero. Everybody is basically priced fairly, priced accordingly, you would think. But there actually is a couple of guys that are sleepers, like Jaron Duran. He potentially could get a boost. He's been playing well as of late after the suspension. But are they going to give him a boost? I don't know if they can actually do that. Brian Wu is priced as a plus one. Potential to go plus two. We'll talk about that. And really, I don't really like Zach Nito. The way I would be looking at the marketplace right now, guys, is come in here and... Look at the sell now column. If you see a sell now where there are about 30 plus stubs above quick sell, Anthony Santander is a really, really good example. I don't know a single thing about how he's been playing in his last seven games, last 15 games, this update this season, but looking at his price, this is somebody I would want to look up. I would want to say, all right, people are clearly investing in him, but his price isn't boosted too high. So I would actually come in here and I would take a look at how he's been playing as of late and the reason his price is inflated, it looks like he had a, a couple of home runs in his last couple of games, but Buddy is still batting 153 in his last 15. Definitely wouldn't be investing in a, in a guy like that, but it's a, it's basically the strategy for how to find people to invest in. Bailey Ober's a really good I really, really like Bailey Ober as a buy. Iglesias, we were in on him from day one as a buy. You can see his price. His price is a plus three, which he is deserving of and going to get. There's a lot of opportunities for investments out there. You just gotta know how to find the price. And I hope this helped out a little bit. Now with silvers, there's a lot of room for stubs to be made on silvers. Back orders or just straight up investing. You know, the reason these silvers are all a quick sell, a lot of them play like trash, like Vientos is not a quick sell. People think he's going gold. But the other guys, they're a quick sell because nobody feels like pushing the button a million times on a silver when they can push it 10 times on a gold. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we're at that time of year where investing is kind of dying down a bit. People who have higher stub counts, they're now investing in the higher overall cards, avoiding these lower overall guys. Definitely is stubs to be made investing or back orders. Uh, maybe I'll have a video on back orders later in the week. Hope this video helped you guys out. Again, Marketplace Monday. Look out for a prediction video before the update comes out. Peace out.